All right, what is up, YouTube? So uh, today we're going to talk about the three-minute chart on TradingView. Uh, a lot of people were asking, have I tried using the three-minute chart for scalping? And so I'm going to give you guys my input and my opinion on this. So we're going to go ahead and hop into the three-minute chart on dollar to the yen here. So do I use this? On a daily basis, no. I don't I don't like using the three-minute chart because if you're going to use the three-minute chart, you might as well just use the five-minute chart uh, in my previous video that I talked about. So with the three-minute chart, it's in between, you know, the one-minute and the, and the five-minute. And only, I don't know if any other um, trading platforms have this, but I know that TradingView has this. And if you look at their time frame here, Maybe got the one second, five seconds, 15, 30 seconds. I don't know if anybody's willing to go that low. I mean, the one minute is probably the lowest I would go. And then and then you got two hours, three hours, and then you got like the 45 minute chart. So, like I said, the most important thing is that you really need to define what time frames you like to trade on and what pairs you like to trade on. That way you're not hopping all around looking for opportunities of trading the forex markets. So based on this three minute chart, I'll just give you guys my my viewpoint right now from what I'm seeing. Basically on this, I would sell USD JPY. The reason being I would sell. There's a lot of resistance here and it's being capped, right? I'm trying to show you guys previous resistance. There's a lot of resistance here at 109.6. Uh, the high was the 109.63. And it hasn't been hitting anything higher than that. Because the most important thing is that you want to backtrack what is the highest price so far for this week. So far for this week, it hasn't been going anything higher than 109, I believe. Yeah, 109.68 was the cutoff. And this one right here. And, then, and it's been down. And it hit all the way down to 109.5. So you're talking about 18 pip range here, about 20 pip range. And from that 20 pip range, we I wouldn't be surprised if, if most pairs for this week are going to consolidate because next week is the holidays. Next week is Christmas. So, and then we fall into New Year's. So don't expect too much volatility going on. You know, especially for the last two weeks of December here. I... I wouldn't highly advise doing any anything crazy on high risk or being aggressive on your approach unless you have a high account that can that can pull standard lots here and there on scalping. Now let's hop into oh let's see another pair. Euro euro to the dollar. Based on this, I'd be looking to test a buy position on euro to the dollar. The new low was coming down here at 111.45. Um, it's been going up here. Now we have a major zone right here, 111.54 and 111.14. And it's just right here. And it's probably going to be here for a bit unless something fundamentally changes the markets. I'm talking about fundamentals. Now I'm talking about the technical side. So I'm talking about a massive breakout where it could be um, the Euro Central Bank being involved uh, with some new news. On the fundamental side, or maybe maybe Donald Trump's doing something for the trade talks that's going to spark up some kind of buying interest or selling interest for the U.S. dollar. So that's why fundamentals is really, really key points, especially at this time and especially in the winter season for those that have been trading for years and years. And so that's something to always pay attention to, especially for the upcoming new year and what is going to happen with the, the new fundamentals are going to play out for next year. Yeah, you got to remember that um, President Trump is getting, uh, whether he's going to get reelected or not, you just got to be prepared for some kind of major correction for the Wall Street. Wall Street's been up for, I mean, let's let's look at this. Wall Street's been up. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm just going to zoom back out, but I mean, you can see how Dow Jones been up. Dow Jones went up all the way to 28.3. Massive, massive move. I mean, S&P 500's been up. I mean, NASDAQ's been up. I've been looking at these guys for a while. And so I'm just looking for some major 
major moves going back down. Um, U.S. dollar going back down here on three-minute chart. So today I'd be looking to sell the U.S. dollar. Most importantly, I'd be looking to sell the U.S. dollar this whole week anyways. But based on the three-minute chart, like I said, it's not much. And I don't want to go in too detail about the three-minute chart because the most important time frame for yourself is to identify these time frames, what you like and what you don't like. And then if you know which time frames you like, right? So if you like the five minute, then you know you're going to be a scalper, mostly on a scalping positions throughout the day. And then if you're a swinger, then you're going to be looking at four hour and daily most of the time anyways, because you want to keep, you want to keep um, your time frames up to date. So that's the most important thing. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, with the three minute chart, I, to me, I wouldn't highly advise using it. We're using, like I said, you can just hop to the, uh, to the five minute, mark the five minute with the 15 minute. And that would be the easiest route of looking at gaps. Because once you identify the price gap, then you identify the price zones, what is consolidating. Most of the time, if it is consolidating, then you're looking for massive breakout out of that zone structure when, when it's consolidating in a smaller time frame. So you can look for opportunities of where it's going to shoot up or shoot down. That's the most important thing, especially when you're looking at smaller time frame during the consolidation periods, especially at this time of the season. Okay. Uh, other than that, like I said, the reason why I talk about USD, JPY, and Euro to the dollar on smaller time frames because they're the lowest spread pairs. They Euro has the has the lowest spreads. Followed behind that is USD, JPY with the second lowest spreads. And you always want to trade the ECN accounts because the ECN accounts has the lowest spreads. It makes no sense to trade a micro account because you're gonna be playing, you're gonna be paying 15, 15, 20 plus spreads on on a micro account, which makes no sense of scalping. And some of you need, you need to pay attention to that, especially when you want to scalp. So that's why I talk a lot about USD JPY first, because USD JPY is the most universal base pair to scalp all day, all night. Versus Euro to the dollar. Euro only moves around, you know, the London and the London New York overlap and then London sessions. And then that's pretty much it. Tokyo Euro is, is dead. So Euro doesn't really do anything. So you're just like the pound. Unless pound has a fundamental event like the Brexit negotiation deals, and then that's it. So other than that, I wish you guys a much um happy holidays. What else? Um happy New Year's coming up. Uh, I am going to talk about why tax season is the most important and best season to trade Forex. I'll highlight that in my next week video or hopefully this weekend if I if I have time. And I'll explain more about tax season, why tax season is, is very, very important to trade. Uh, the most beneficial season to trade Forex. And so stay tuned for that, guys. So other than that, I wish you guys a, much, a really, really great successful week. So that's it, guys. Peace.